Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tendulkar. With me is Sonal Bhutra, and these are the top stories. Midcaps underperform in a volatile trade ahead of the FOMC meeting outcome tomorrow. Consumer durables, capital goods eke out gains, while IT FMCG drags. Sterling and Wilson Renewables gains on emerging the lowest bidder for a fresh 2100 crore rupee order from NTPC. This is the second such project the company has backed from NTPC in the last seven months. Phoenix Mills perks up on bullish commentary and a buy rating from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. The brokerages gives its long-term vision and expansion plans a thumbs up. City Gas distributors gain on a positive outlook from CLSA. It expects Gujarat Gas, IGL and MGL to see strong margin in the fourth quarter. Okay, those are the top headlines that we are tracking for you on Midcap Radar. Good afternoon. It continues to be a very volatile market. Yes, we are in the green, but we have been seeing some uh, volatility in the last couple of uh, couple of hours as well. So we did see a sharp recovery uh, at around 1 p.m. and that has been sold on to a little bit. Yes, still we are up around 9 or 90 odd points, and that is a good gain going by what we saw in global markets as well. Uh, the midcap side of things looking good as well, four tenths of a percent higher there, and Bank Nifty is the one which is outperforming today that index is sitting with gains of around eight tenths of percent but Rima really the big question is what happens when the FOMC meet because ahead of that we will continue to see this sort of a volatility yes but the only good part today is at least uh, you know the the gap rises have not been sold yes. into and the little bit of a dip that we got at 11.30 was actually bought into and markets have climbed higher and now it's 17,075. Let's talk a bit about mid caps. The advanced decline ratio is healthy. Two stocks in the green for one in the red. Vivek is at the big wall for our mid cap movers segment. Vivek. Well, thank you so much for that. You know, it's a green screen today, so no stocks are the, hitting a fresh 52-week low in today's trading session, at least in the broader end of markets in the Nifty 500. Uh, select stocks doing very well. Sare Gama up today on very good volumes as well, up almost 11% in the session. India Mart on the back of, uh, you know, initiating coverage by Lara, the stock is up almost 3.5% in the session. Stuffcraft today is up almost 13%, very, very strong volumes. CSB Bank brokers believe that this particular bank, with exposure to the gold loan segment, does have a good growth runway and which is why that particular stock is up in today's trading session. Some of the stocks that uh, are moving up on very strong volumes, you know, especially compared to the 5-day to 10-day average, Pyramid Fava bouncing very sharply off its 52-week low. Uh, Credit Access Grameen up almost 5% on strong volumes. Paytm as well as Compton today seeing good volume backed action. On the other hand, some of the stocks that are seeing a bit of sell-off, especially uh, in today's trading session, Poker now you know, down almost 3.5%. Team Leaves continues its fall. Fortis Healthcare down almost 3%. And lastly, LNT Tech Services on the back of a brokerage downgrade down almost 2.5% in today's trading session. Okay, all right. So those are some movers. Vivek, thank you for joining us as always and taking us through the mid-cap movers uh, in today's trading session. Uh, with that, we'll uh, welcome Shrikant Chauhan of Kodak Securities for a technical check on the markets. Uh, Shrikant, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, as Reema was saying, at least the good part has been, or at least the good part for the bulls has been that uh, Nifty has uh, continued to be in the green. And right now, we are seeing levels of around uh, 17,074 on the Nifty. Do you expect this to sustain? Do you see a, a follow-on rally to this? Or will there be a pullback? Yeah, good afternoon, Soren. Yeah, I think, see, one thing is very clear that now there is huge amount of uh, open interest lined up at 17,000. And huge amount of put writing is there. So till the market is not breaking back the levels of 17,000, we are going to see the market to remain uh, between the narrow trading range of 17,200 and 17,000. But I think on the uh, dismissal of 17,300 only, we can expect some bull run in the market or on the dismissal of 16,800. So the broader range is of 17,300 and 16,800. And in the narrow range, I think we are going to be, uh, see, uh, we are going to see some more uh, stock specific action. Could you talk about the stock specific action? So I think in that, uh, chemical stocks are really doing well. And uh, most of them are uh, reversing from their important loads. They have fallen heavily in the last three months. So most of them are reversing with some positive divergence, which is positive for the uh, 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 entire basket or entire space. Uh, in that specifically, we like SRF, which is currently around 23, 40, 45. Uh, there we are expecting some 24, 40, 24, 50 sort of level. So it's a buy at current levels with a stop loss around 2300. The other stock which we like is uh, Petronet LNG, and there also we are seeing some rounding bottom sort of formation. 
Uh, most of these stocks from the same space are doing well. They are recovering after hitting the uh, immediate support levels. Uh, here also we are expecting stock to move towards 250. So it's a buy at around uh, 234, 235 levels with a stop loss around 225. Okay. All right, Srikant. Thank you so much for joining us. That's a technical check on the markets. But for now, we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, you, Shekhar, the founder, promoter and managing director at Galaxy Surfactants, will join in to discuss their business outlook. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Well, uh, we've been seeing some comeback or a pullback in the chemical companies or the chemical stocks in the broader markets. Uh, Galaxy Surfactants is one of them. It gained in yesterday's week trading session. It's up around 5% this week so far. Prices of key raw material, laurel alcohol, they continue to decline. And ICICI Securities expects Galaxy Surfactants to benefit from the fall and improve its volumes as well. What is the demand outlook and uh, the outlook of margins as well? You, Shekhar, the founder, promoter, and Managing Director at the company is joining us now. Mr. Shekhar, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, you know, we are almost towards the end of FY23 and quarter four as well. Can you give us a sense of how much has demand improved, say, uh, quarter four of last year and on a quarter on quarter basis as well? And what does it mean in terms of your orders, your deal wins in FY24 as well? Uh, what I would like to say is... Uh... <clears throat> Uh, India promises uh, to be robust, uh, like what it has been in the last year. Uh, there is still uh, a stress in the Africa, Middle East, uh, Turkey region. Both the US and Europe continue to be cautious. Uh, so as far as the coming year is concerned, uh, uh, we would continue to aspire for a volume growth overall. <clears throat> of about, you know, six to eight percent in the coming year. Yeah. And what is the visibility for volume growth in the next year, FI24? And will it be export or domestic market driven? I think it will be mostly domestic market driven because as I said, uh, US and Europe uh, remain cautious and uh, Africa, Middle East, uh, you know, still, you know, continues to experience uh, the stress on consumptions, largely, of course, uh, driven by hyperinflation, uh, and uh, which has been again engendered by the currency depreciation, steep currency depreciation in all those countries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Shekhar, when you say 6 to 8% volume growth, you mean for FI24, right? Because for FI23, you have a volume guidance of flat volumes. Yeah, we would be very happy, as I said in the last time, that we would be very happy to level the last year's volume yeah okay so that's uh, about volume the, this uh, the bright spot has been uh, india because where as you see we have grown on india uh, volumes by almost uh, eight percent in the first uh, uh, nine months of the year and uh, we would uh, suddenly grow uh, at the end of the year i think we would be ahead of the market growth. yeah hmm. Okay, so uh, you're talking about uh, India being a bright spot when it comes to demand and volumes yeah, also of around six to eight. Yeah. Yes, domestic volumes India, yeah. of around six to eight percent in FI24. Uh, you right. know, laurel alcohol prices they have been coming down. It's your raw material. Uh, what does it mean in terms of EBITDA per ton? You did see around twenty twenty one thousand rupees per ton. That is something that you've guided for as well. Uh, will you see an improvement here? So as we have said, uh, we are not going to give any guidance on. Uh, EBITDA per ton, mm -hmm. but what's going to be important is that our uh, uh, EBITDA, we will certainly see uh, uh, a growth over uh, the previous year in line with uh, the volume growth. Uh, we, 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 we say that, you know, as far as the coming year is concerned, we uh, aspire for a 68% volume growth and there will be an absolute EBITDA growth. Yeah. Got that. Uh, how are the inventory levels at some of your customers? Uh, they are now, uh, 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 you know, uh, flattening out as far as the whatever previous inventories were there. They are uh, getting diluted, and uh, people, all the customers uh, are almost coming back to the pre-COVID uh, inventory levels because the supply chain situation has uh, significantly improved uh, across uh, the various geographies. Uh, so we, we even even in our case, uh, uh, we are seeing the inventories coming back to the original levels. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Shekha, when you speak about how India is the bright spot and exports still in some of these regions is languishing, I specifically wanted to ask you first, what is the contribution from exports right now? The last time I, rem I remember it was 45-55. Uh, yeah. Will you see a change in that mix considering you will have more exposure to India and specifically in Europe? Because there was a recent report where one of the analysts said that still the impact of European crisis has not come to the chemical makers. They can still benefit more. Do you think that is something that will pan out in the industry? See, if you see our international business used to constitute approximately... 65% of the total consolidated sales. Uh, but uh, this year, we would expect it to be somewhere around uh, 60, 61, 62, and 39% uh, uh, or 38, 39 uh, will be constituted by the domestic uh, India sales. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, when I talk about this European situation, do you think uh, the worst is over in that region? And uh, also Turkey as well, 10% of your revenues. Have you seen some improve? Of course, we saw that uh, mishap is well happening in the country. But do you think for some time there won't be any volume demand or any sort of uh, incremental uh, demand coming from that region? No, we haven't seen any significant improvement in situation, uh, both in Turkey as well as uh, Europe. We have to wait and watch for a few more months. Okay, uh, Mr. Shekhar, we leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining in. That's Galaxy Surfic Tent, uh, expecting a 6 to 8% volume growth for this year, maintaining that guidance. Uh, slip into a very short break on that note. On the other side, we'll uh, talk about individual stocks. We'll also get in our Midcap Spotlight stock of the day. Let's get to our segment, Midcap Spotlight. We'll focus on um, the renewable space. So, first up, Sonal, you're going to be talking about Linde India. Uh, well, yes, Linde India, it's a gas company, but they are focusing a lot on the renewable space. And that's the reason why the stock is on our radar. Yesterday, they uh, they reported to the exchanges that they will be investing 5 crore rupees in 18, for 18.29% stake in FP Solar Shakti. Of course, it looks like a very small amount. But just to give you the details here, the purpose of acquisition for the company says is to purchase renewable power under captive mechanism. What this will do is it will result in lower tariff and consequent cost savings as well. Since now it is a provider of gas, to industries um, if their input costs are coming in lower as well so of course that will have some margin difference and margin uh, increase for the company as well Haithong says that yes it is a small investment but it is a strategic investment that the company has made into renewable energy and it is the third investment in the renewable power company that the company uh, that Linde India has made so basically it's a well thought of decision that the company is going ahead with to increase the renewable portfolio to decrease the cost as far as uh, the input side is concerned and tariffs as well uh, earlier company had acquired 20% stake in Avada uh, for 11 and a half crore rupees that is in April 2022 recently they also acquired 26% stake in FPL Surya Private Limited for 7.5 crore rupees. So yes, smaller amounts, it would not look like it's a big acquisition that the company has made, but it is a strategic investment that the company has made to increase the renewable portfolio in the longer term. It would uh, lead to cost savings for the company. Interesting. Now let's uh, stick with the green energy space. Yash is focusing in on Sterling and Wilson. Well, Sterling and Wilson Renewable has received a significant order. This order is worth 2100 crore rupees. It's received from NTPC and the place of execution would be Gujarat. Uh, as far as the order details are concerned, it's a 1200 megawatt solar PV project comprising of four blocks of 300 megawatt each. Uh, now, what we've been given to understand from our sources is that the order is expected to be awarded in the next 40 to 45 days. NTPC uh, is likely to import modules here, which is expected to lead to a faster execution of this order. Out of the total 2100 crore order, what we've been given to understand is that 1400 crore is expected to be executed in FY24 itself. And this order is expected to get company gross margins anywhere between 10 to 12%. Uh, to Sterling and Wilson Solar. Uh, do not confuse this with the order which was received by Sterling and Wilson Renewable back in August 2023. That was also from NTPC uh, at the same uh, uh, point of or place of execution. That was a 2200 uh, crore order. This is a separate uh, 2100 crore order which has come over and above that. So in about a year from NTPC uh, to Sterling and Wilson Renewable, a total order of about 4300 crore has been received. Thank you very much uh, for that. By the way, the Nifty has now scaled the peak of 
1,100. It's a triple-digit rally on the Nifty with the Sensex surging close to about 400 points. So things are picking up now. The dips today have been brought into and the last leg of the rally has come in courtesy HDFC Limited as well as HDFC Bank. Remember, just recently got the NCLT approval for the merger between the two and we've learned from sources that perhaps they could get some relaxation on meeting the priority sector lending. But today you're seeing a big, big move in both these names. The low was somewhere around uh, you know, 12, 12, 15. And after that, the stocks have taken off. Adani Enterprises is another one which catches your attention. Adani Enterprises has gained about two and a quarter percent yesterday. Remember, the stock was under pressure because of their plans to cut back on their capex, but the stock is rebounding. IT continues to flounder in trade. So even on an up day today, the Nifty IT index is still struggling in the red with the index down close to about three-fourths of a percentage point. So they're just not participating in the up move or the relief rally, which is currently underway in the market. So IT is still on the back foot. Uh, for the Nifty, 17,100 in a good place right now. We'll slip into a break. On the other side, our mutual fund corner comes up next.